Eagle Eye Drones. Hello everyone, we're here from Eagle Eye Drones to talk to you, the City Council of Oakland, about the use of drones in your town. My name is Brad Waterstrat and I'm head of R&D at Eagle Eye Drones and I'll talk to you about the history and the description of a drone. Hello everyone, my name is Hany El Nomer. I'm the lead programmer of Eagle Eye Drones. I'm here to give you a brief uh, introduction about drones. Hello, I'm Jason Galeka. I'm head of public relations and I'm going to tell you about the advantages and disadvantages of using drones. Hello everyone, my name is Sayed Mansoor and I'm a remote pilot for Eagle Eye Drones and I'll be summing up the final ideas we discuss and we'll be here for any questions at the very end. This is a story from the not too distant future. It's the day of your daughter Millie's big football match and to be clear that is the sort of football you play with your feet. Anyway, she is missing a vital piece of equipment, specifically a size 3 Puma Evo Power firm ground soccer shoe, the left one. And some of it, sadly, is in the family's three-year-old bulldog, Stuart. So now what? Well, you could yell angrily at the poor thing, but what's the point? Because all it will hear is blah, 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 Stuart, blah, blah, Stuart, blah. Much better to behave like a rational human being. Find your tablet and place an order with Amazon for a pair of Puma Evo Power Firm Ground soccer shoes and have them delivered in 30 minutes or less. And in a location not too far away, a miracle of modern technology is dispatched. It's an Amazon drone and after rising vertically like a helicopter to nearly 400 feet, this amazing hybrid design assumes a horizontal orientation and becomes a streamlined and fast airplane. In time, there'll be a whole family of Amazon drones, different designs for different environments. This one can fly for 15 miles, and it knows what's happening around it. It uses sense and avoid technology to, well, sense and then avoid obstacles on the ground and in the air. Back at the house, you're getting a message on your tablet to say that your prime air delivery is arriving. And it goes back to vertical mode and scans the landing area for potential hazards. This amazing innovation then lowers itself slowly to the ground, drops off the package and flies straight back up to altitude. And moments later, you're walking through the door with a brand new pair of Puma Evo Power Firm Ground soccer shoes, size three for Millie, and a Nyla Bone chicken flavoured Jura chew for naughty, naughty Stuart. And balance is, 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 is restored to the universe. Hello everyone, this is Hany Al Namer and this is a brief introduction of drones. What you just saw was an ad for Amazon's future drone delivery service. As Aaron Lois said in this code, it's only a matter of time before Santa replaces the reindeer with Amazon delivery drones. Drone delivery is just one of the many things that drones will be able to accomplish in the near future. We are here to convince the city of Oakland, Illinois to allow the use of drones for delivery purposes. A drone in simplest term is an unmanned aircraft or area vehicle that can perform various tasks. Drones were originally used for military purposes. However, as technology advanced, they become useful in civilian matters for many things. Nowadays, social media is filled with negative news about drones, such as flying too high, which will interfere with airplanes, or flying too close to an airport. Despite all these negative news, there are many as positive aspects of using drones, such as agricultural, 3D mapping, photography, and disaster aid relief. Some recreational use include drone fighting and drone racing. Although these are 
these are all great applications of drones the most prominent use in a city or town environment is drone delivery which is what our main focus will be on hello everyone my name is brad and i'll be talking to you about the history of drones Although drones might seem like a fairly new concept in today's world, they've actually been around since the early 1900s. Various forms of drones were used in both World War I and II, but those types of drones are very different from the ones that you see in the media today. Because of that, I'm going to split this section into two parts, one being the history of military drones and the other being the history of quadcopters. Military drones have been in the works for as long as aerial warfare has been around. Aerial warfare leaves a big chance that pilots might not make it back safely, so it only makes sense that engineers would want to create a way for fighter planes to be controlled remotely. From as early as World War I, Elmer Ambrose Sperry, the inventor of the gyroscope, began work on the guidance system of what's called an air torpedo. These air torpedoes were essentially unmanned biplanes that were to be catapulted over enemy position with a high level of accuracy. Once the missiles traveled a predetermined distance, they would stop and automatically fly downward. These missiles had enough TNT in them to blow towns apart. Eventually, the program stopped because of the end of the war in 1918. What you see here is a full-size reproduction of an air torpedo called the Kettering Bug. In World War II, the development continued, but this time it was different. The Navy launched Operation Anvil, which sent B-24 bombers that were remotely controlled to crash at selected locations in Nazi-controlled France. Technology was still limited, so planes had to take off with a pilot, but once the plane was on track for the target, the pilot would eject and parachute to safety. This program proved to be very unsuccessful. Progress on military drones dissipated for many years because they simply were not needed. Development was slow until the late 60s and early 70s when engineers continued to experiment with drones mainly for surveillance reasons. Many major improvements in control systems occurred during the 80s and 90s which led to modern day drones. Since as early as 1920, many people wanted to solve the problem of vertical flight. Helicopters were able to take off vertically, but this was only because of the tail rotor. Without the tail rotor, the helicopter would not have a resistance to the generated torque, which would cause it to spin in circles. The solution to this problem? Quadcopters. The first was the Omnichen 2, invented in 1920 by Etienne Omnichen. Since then, a quadcopter named the Converter Wings Model A was built in 1956 and the Curtis Wright V-27, which was built in 1958. As technology progressed, quadcopters began to evolve into what is seen today. They are becoming more and more affordable every day and continue to improve. Within the last couple of years, companies like DJI, 3DR, and many more have been developing drones cheap enough for the average consumer. Things like aerial photography and drone racing are quickly gaining popularity. The development of drone technology can bring a whole new range of possibilities to our world today. Amazon.com has recently talked about using drones as one of their delivery services. Other popular ideas include hurricane hunting, 3D mapping, wildlife protection, farming techniques, and search and rescue operations. A drone, in simplest terms, is an unmanned aircraft or unmanned aerial vehicle. In order to understand how drones operate, let's look at all the different components of a drone to see how each contributes to the overall vehicle. A quadcopter frame can be made of anything, as long as it's able to firmly hold all of the other components. Ideally, a drone should be as light as possible so the motors don't have to work hard to lift it off the ground. Keeping this in mind, a frame that's strong but light is essential. One of the most common materials used for drone frames is carbon fiber because it's both lightweight and strong. All drones need motors in order to fly, but motors vary depending on what the drone is used for. Displayed somewhere either on the motor or on the packaging are various letters and numbers to describe certain things. The most important of these is the KV rating, which doesn't mean kilovolts, but instead tells the number of rotations the motor will, will turn in a one minute interval. For example, let's say the motor has a 3100 kilovolt rating. 
This means it's going to rotate 3,100 times per minute at a 1 volt rate. The KV rating is crucial depending on what the drone is used for. Lower KV motors with big propellers are better for bigger drones, while high KV motors with small propellers are better for smaller drones. Propellers also play a huge part in how the drone flies. The three factors that determine a propeller are length, pitch, and material. Similar to the frame, the propeller could be made out of almost any material as long as it's sturdy and lightweight. The easiest way to describe the pitch of a propeller is to compare it to a screw being screwed into a piece of wood. Pitch is simply the distance that the screw would travel after a single rotation. Normally, longer propellers work with low KV motors, while shorter propellers work with high KV motors. The ESCs, or electronic speed controllers, are responsible for how fast your motors spin. Each motor is connected to its own ESC. Each ESC takes a reading from the radio controller and sends a proper signal to the motors telling them how fast to spin. This is all determinant on how low or high the throttle is on your controller. Everything on a drone is connected to a PDB, or power distribution board. The PDBD is responsible for distributing power to all the different components. The motors are connected to the ESCs and the ESCs are connected to the PDB. The PDB then has a wire that attached to the battery and another wire that attaches to the flight controller. Next for the brain of the drone. Everything is processed in what's called a flight controller. Right after plugging in the battery for the drone, the gyros are calibrated automatically. Once the gyros are calibrated, the flight controller now uses those readings as a level surface. While in flight, the flight controller takes hundreds of readings per second to make sure that the drone is level. If it's not, the flight controller will automatically make adjustments to make sure that it is. This is the reason why drones are so stable during flight. The flight controller can also be programmed to perform different flight modes. A few examples of these flight modes include altitude hold mode, loiter mode, circle mode, and acro mode. Altitude hold mode simply will make the drone hover at a locked altitude no matter where you move the Y-axis throttle on the controller. Loiter mode holds, holds the drone sit steady and does not allow for any movement in the X or Y direction. Circle mode causes the drone to circle around a selected point as long as you have a GPS. An acrobatic mode is used for drone racing and causes the drone to be much more responsive and agile. These are only a few of the many flight modes that are available. None of these components are going to work without a battery. As with many RC vehicles today, lithium polymer batteries are the most common for drones and different drones require different batteries. The three most important components of the battery are the cells, the milliamp hours, and the C rating. Most LiPos have one to four cells, but there are some that have up to six. Each cell has a capacity of 3.7 volts, so a 2S battery would have 7.4 volts, while a 4S battery would have 14.8 volts. Voltage of the battery directly influences how fast your motors spin. Earlier, it was stated that a 3100 kV motor at a 1 volt rate will spin 3100 times per minute. If a 3S battery was in use, then the motors would spin 34,410 times per minute. All LiPos will have an MAH value or milliamp hour rating, which is basically your gas. The MAH number basically tells you how much power the battery has. Last is the C value, which is the discharge rate. This value tells you how fast the battery can be discharged safely. If you multiply the C rating by the capacity in amps, you'll get the max amount of amps that your drone can run at without harming the battery. Drones are a fantastic modern invention that can be used for many things. One thing drones are being used for is delivering packages. Here's a picture of what one of those drones would look like. Large companies including Amazon are willing to use drones to deliver packages. Amazon calls it Amazon Prime Air. According to Amazon, they have developing centers in different countries in the world, including the United States, United Kingdom, and Israel. Amazon is performing these tests to make sure drones are safe to deliver packages without any problem. One advantage of using drones to ship products is shipping prices can be reduced. When you order something online, it usually comes from UPS. 
When UPS ships something, there's a long process it has to go through. As you can see in the picture, once you order something, you have to pay for it. Then the company packages it and sends it to the local UPS store. Then from there, they would fly it to the local store closest to your house and drive it to your house where you will receive it. This shipping process is expensive because the companies have to pay the drivers, the pilot, pay for gas, they have to pay for the facility, the electricity, at each individual store. This method of shipping is costly and time consuming. When drones deliver packages, it doesn't cost them any money. Here in this picture, you can see standard delivery rates from same day to next day delivery. You can see Amazon is much quicker and a lot cheaper than everyone else. Another advantage of using drones for delivery is you could receive the item quicker. Shipping prices are determined by when you want the package. As I mentioned before, if you want the package the next day, it will cost you a lot more money. If drones deliver packages, you could order something and receive it within 30 minutes, guaranteed. Amazon plans on shipping 5 pound or less packages within 30 minutes if the delivery location is within 10 miles of their facilities. For some people, it might actually be quicker for them to order something online than actually going to the store and pick it up. Not everyone has the convenience of a store close by or even have a form of transportation to get to the store. Ordering things are online are much cheaper than buying them in stores. The reason for this is because the stores have to pay for an outlet mall strip, they have a high electric bill, and they have to staff all the salespeople. With the use of drones, people can save money and get the item they want in about the same amount of time as they go to the store. Protecting the environment is an issue for many people. We are seeing more environmentally friendly inventions, especially with vehicles. A truck causes a large amount of pollution in the air and is not good for us or the environment. This is why a drone would be useful for delivering packages. A drone is run on by a battery. The size of the battery depends on the amount of weight the drone is expected to carry. According to Dietetcher, the average battery life of a drone is between 10 and 12 minutes. Some drones are capable for flying for 25 minutes. These batteries can be switched out and recharged after every use. A battery does not create pollution, so it is not a risk to the people and the environment. NASA created biodegradable drones. These biodegradable drones are made up of mycelium, which is a root-like material found in fungi. This drone looks exactly like an egg carton. If this drone were to fall and break, it would dissolve in minutes without leaving a trace of it even existing. Not only do trucks pollute the environment, but they are a safety hazard to other drivers on the road. When UPS or FedEx delivers a package, the truck never pulls into the recipient's driveway. They just pull over the truck a little and park in the middle of the street. This is a safety hazard to all the other drivers on the road and the driver of the truck too. When the UPS truck pulls on the side of the road, it forces all the other drivers to wait for him to come back or to go around him. If the driver of the vehicle behind the delivery truck chooses to go around him, he may have to go on to oncoming traffic. If a drone delivers packages, it doesn't have to stop or worry about traffic from other vehicles. When Amazon ships a package using a drone, it won't ship it in a cardboard box. They will put the item in a plastic box while shipping it. This box will protect the item from things such as water and help it prevent it from breaking. Items are not shipped as safely now and it has been known that shipping company workers do not take care of the packages they ship. Many people are completely against drones. The main reason why people are against drones is because they think they invade their privacy. This reason being because drones have cameras on them. These cameras are not used for spying. These cameras create a real life map on the ground identifying a grid where it can plot points and safely land. Another reason why people think drones are invading their privacy is because they are operated by a person using a controller. Many people fear that the operator could be using the drones to spy on them or the government is using them to spy on them. As a result of this, people do not want drones by their house and they are even going as far as shooting them down if they fly over their house. Another limitation on drones is the location. In the past, drones have flown into plane engines causing them to land unexpectedly or even crash. Due to these accidents, drones cannot be flown near airports or over a certain height. Another reason why people don't like the idea of drones delivering packages is because they can break. According to the Washington Post, more than 400 large U.S. military drones have crashed since 2001. Even though these are a different type of drones, delivering drones can still break too. 
If a drone was to malfunction and fall down and break, this could cause the package to break and leave the customer without their merchandise. If drones were to keep falling down and breaking, it could cost the company a lot of money to repair them or possibly replace them too. Limitations on drones vary based on the location. The United Kingdom is one of many countries that already have limitations set on drones. One limitation is that a person cannot be within 50 meters of a drone while it takes off or lands. This is just in case the remote pilot loses control of the drone so it won't hit anyone. Another limitation is the amount of weight the drone can carry. A drone is made of carbon fiber, which is a lightweight material. So the amount of weight a drone can carry will depend on the distance. Amazon already has specifications about the weight of the package they are willing to ship. Amazon plans on flying drones with a maximum weight of 55 pounds in a 10 mile radius of its warehouse to speeds up to 50 miles per hour with packages weighing up to 5 pounds. The FFA has regulations on drones based on the operation of them. They have three different types of categories for operations. These operations include public operations, civil operations, and model aircrafts. It was taking the FFA a long time to decide if Amazon could test drones in the United States, so they began doing their testing in other countries. They were finally allowed to fly them in the U.S. On June 26, 2014, the FFA said any operations not conducted strictly for hobby or recreation purposes cannot be operated under the special rule for modern aircraft. The FFA considers Amazon using drones to deliver packages as commercial use, not as hobby. Therefore, they are not allowed to fly drones in the U.S. as of right now. The FFA is still figuring out how the air can be full of millions of drones without hitting other drones or electrical wires. The FFA doesn't want drones to crash and fall and hit someone. Another limitation on drones is the weather. It snows in the northern parts of the United States for about four months in a year. A drone can't deliver packages outside if it's raining or snowing. The moisture from the rain or snow can get inside of the electrical components of the drone causing them to fry. High wind speeds also affects the flight path of a drone. Too much wind can affect the flight pattern of the drone causing it to run into something unexpectedly. If you can't fly a drone in the snow, rain, or whenever it's windy, it really limits the number of days Amazon is willing to deliver.